everybody, Seeky the Kid here, welcome back to even more Pokemon Crystal Clear. Last episode, we defeated Faulkner's Gym, we got the next badge, and then we entered the Sprout Tower and got mercilessly beaten. <laughs> this episode, we are actually going to be taking on the tower once again, now that I've leveled up our main team. That is right, unfortunately, Solitaire and Prosper, and Prosper, Proserpina will not be staying. Solitaire because in this generation, the Ariados line doesn't really get them any good moves leveling up. And I'm not sure if I would want to spend a lot of TMs on them. If there is any good uses, like feel free to leave anything. Because I really wouldn't mind using Solitaire on the team. And you already know the reasoning for Proserpina because... Unfortunately, Miss Magius doesn't exist in this game, and the big benefit that the um, Mysterious line had in this game, especially with Levitate now not existing, because abilities weren't introduced yet, I just can't really see a very good use for uh, the Mysterious line right now. But we do have our four main competitors, Cerberus, Sparks, Luna, and Kamazot. And... We're taking on the Bra the Sprout Tower once again. Let's hope this time we can beat the Masters. Nothing down here. Let's head this way. Yes, I'm back. We stand guard at this tower. Here we ex express our gratitude to honor all Pokemon. Yep. But now I know you, dude. You're the guy with that victory bell that annihilated me last time. Here we go. Victory bell, level 35. Alright, let's see. Sweet scent, but it failed. Aha! Fate attack! Good! Sleep powder! Did it affect! Good! Bite it! And it's down! Executor! I'm not gonna switch out. We can use Feint Attack because it's a Psychic type. Stomp. Ouch. Bite it. And good night. Critical hit. Yes. It's time we topple the tower. I hate you. That's mean. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but, really? I know, I should probably... I'm way too curious. Fifty-one. Ha he ha. You're hilarious, game. Okay. Nice! And now, uh, good night. Gengar's defenses are not good. I know from personal experience, I've trained one, I've used one. They're fast, and they're more glass cannons. Proceed. Nice. We beat the magic man. Alright, so... We got some potions. We didn't take that much damage. I'm on. We don't need a full heal yet, so. I actually still have a ton of money. I did a lot of training at Faulkner's gym. I already challenged him quite a bit. As said before, rechallenging the gyms. Good way if you want to uh, grind out for some experience. We're going to take down this guy now. This is brand new territory, because if you recall, I never played Crystal. I have played. Well, I've played. Let's go, and that's a remake of the first game, so I do know that, I know Kanto's area, 
a lot more. I don't know Johto though, so all these trainers are new. And most likely aren't the same as they were in the original game too, based on... Since, like, we're a lot further ahead. So let's use Feign Attack, because it's a good move. Stab. Sweet Scent. It actually got the Sweet Scent on. What does that do again? Does it lower accuracy? Oh, it lowers evasion. Okay, so nothing I really need to worry about, because these guys weren't really missing much anyway. And I doubt... Unless they're going to be using a move that has, like, no accuracy at all, which I doubt they're going to. Sunflora. Makes me really wish I never accidentally got rid of Ember, because I would have been through this area in no time flat. But, hey, what are you going to do? It's a little too late for that now. Sunfloor is what many people arguably call the worst Pokemon in this game. Well... Ledian. It's a bug tie. Let's see. If it's... Hmm... Ah, why not? We'll send out Luna. Is it part fighting? Don't remember. But it failed. Double slap. One slap. Two slap. Three slap. And a critical. Reflect. Boop. It didn't work. We minimized. Light screen! Special defense rose! I can't believe I actually got Sing Off! You're asleep now! Aha! Hit it again! I'm an ant! Actually, technically, an ant compared to a ladybug would be kind of big, I think. But it kind of looks like we may have this. Oh, wow. And Reflect faded away, so this is going to do a ton more. And it's over. Wow. I can't believe that actually worked. I was half expecting Luna to either get one shot or get take one hit and be down to red health, so I need to switch out. Wow! Nice! Oh, I'm weak! You know what I really don't like in these Pokemon games? When a strong trainer says that they're weak only because they lost. You know, just because you're- just because you lose doesn't mean you're weak, it just means that you're not as strong or didn't use a good uh, a strategy that worked well against an opponent. Kind of, you know, it gets under your nerves, right? I'm not the only one that feels that way, am I? Faint attack. Sweet scent. My evasion's gone. Even though that's probably going to use 100% accurate moves anyway, meaning I wasn't going to be dodging. That's a small problem I think a lot of people have with sweet scent as a move. Because the only time you're ever going to down an opponent's evasion is if they use something like Minimize or Double Team. And really, you'd be better off raising your accuracy. I like Azam. Okay. I'm not really that, you know, shocked. I mean, it could be, for all I know, level 40. And it's going to, like, do a ton. But really, I'm a Dark type. It is a Psychic type. I'm most likely going to one-shot it. Alakazam's really fast and has a lot of offense. I'm surprised it actually didn't go down in one hit, because Alakazam doesn't usually have the best defenses. But it looks like it's down. And also, why give it disable if it can only work if I move first? 
Zatu. You know, I want to say something right now. Just a funny little story. It's on. It's, it's on a topic we haven't seen yet, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people already know about it. When I first got X and Y, um, that game, believe it or not, was the first Pokemon game I knew where I learned about uh, what shiny Pokemon were. And you probably can guess where this is going based on how I said Zatu. What happened was, at the near end of the game, I had a friend who was playing with me. And a uh, Pokemon X and Y, by the way, that is the game that kind of got me back into the series. I ha I got black and white. I played it for a little bit, but I wasn't an RPG. I wasn't as big as an RPG fan when I got it. So I was just kind of meh when it came to the game. I wasn't as like into Pokemon. I can say it just it was fun. But it wasn't something that I was majorly into at that time. But I got X and Y, I played through, and at the end, I um, got into the uh, Safari Zone area. Not the Friends Safari, like that Safari Zone type area. Oh, there's wild Pokemon in this? Um, so yeah. So, when I went there, um, it was after my friend showed me, like, him going shiny hunting, and he actually got, I think, I think if I remember correctly, he got, like, a shiny, um, Carvana, that's it, he got a shiny Carvana, and he was gonna evolve into a Sharpedo, I believe, it's the Pokemon that evolves into Sharpedo, I'm not sure if I got it right, I'm sorry if I didn't, but he did that, and he, like, showed me that, oh, if it's a shiny Pokemon, at first it has this sparkle effect, and he was staying at my house, and he left because, like, he needed to go home. And, um, afterwards, after that, I went into the Safari Zone like area because I didn't know what it was, and I never actually entered it, even though you can I, you see it during the main game, I know that. But I never entered it before, and I just walk around, and the first encounter I find is a Zatu that had that sparkle animation. And I was just, I was just curious of why this just happened. I was wondering if maybe it happens every time you enter this area for the first time. I mean, I know that there, I know about one Pokemon in particular. And I'm not going to say it because, well, if you didn't guess by this and the fact that it's a Pokemon Crystal thing, I'm not going to spoil a shiny thing that's coming up, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one later. But that shiny Zatu, I got on X and Y, and I did catch it. It's not like, it's not like I didn't know what to do and I like freaked out and KO'd it or something, or that it, or that like I ran away from it. Um, I personally never used a Zatu before, so I thought maybe at first it was just a unique animation that the Pokemon had. And then I found out that it was a shiny Pokemon, but because I seriously didn't, like, get anything, understand anything so special about it, I simply caught it and I put it in the PC. And then, like, two weeks later, my friend comes back over to my house, he brings his game and he, like, showing me his new shiny collection. And I'm like, oh yeah, I found something like that. And he, he thinks I'm joking around when I said that I walked into the, the Safari Zone and just so happened to have found a shiny Pokemon in my first encounter. And he was really shocked when he saw that I had a shiny Zatu. He checked to see if the OT, the original trainer name, was mine. Yes, it was. So he was just, like, so confused. And he was saying... Why, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you take a picture or record it? This is something special. And just ever since then, I just realized that shiny Pokemon were something kind of rare. And, well, I was really lucky that I accidentally found one. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not the first person to accidentally just stumble upon a shiny Pokemon. In fact, there is another person who played Pokemon Crystal, and without naming any names, let's just say he found a shiny blue coughing, and it made him go quite high-pitched. 
And I just wish I knew what a shiny Pokemon was at that time, so maybe my reaction would have been something different. Because he told me about shiny Pokemon. I remember that we talked about it, but I was like, you know, I'm not sure if it's that interesting. It's just, it just has some sparkle effects. I mean, what does it change? I didn't know what it was, and... Turns out, the first thing I find when I enter this Safari Zone-like area, because I'm, I, it wasn't the Friend Safari, I, I can say that again, but it wasn't the Friend Safari, I find this shiny Zatu, and I was just, I was stunned when I found out, once again, that, oh, this is something really rare, maybe you should, oh, I don't know, be appreciative that you got something rare? It was just... I didn't know that it was something special, and that's kind of my story of how shiny Pokemon became so interesting to me. I accidentally found one just wandering around a new area I never explored. And really, just thinking back to my friend, I haven't seen him in a while, maybe I'll talk to him, I hit the mic again, maybe I'll talk to him in a little bit tell him about this because I'm not sure if I ever told him about my YouTube channel. This was before I made the CQ the Kid channel. It was de it was definitely a few years back when X and Y literally just came out. And really the only reason why I got X and Y again is because I was watching people play Pokemon games. I realized that I may be interested in playing them again because like I said I had black and white. I I played it for a little bit but then I just lost interest because you know I just, I don't know, I just lost an interest. And then, well, X and Y comes out after I'm done watching a bit, and I think maybe I'll get it, I get it, I play through the game, I finally enter that Safari Zone looking area after my friend shows me him going shiny hunting, and I find a shiny Zatu. And it's just, ever since then, I've... I've always tried to on any playthrough of a Pokemon game without like getting too heavily deep into the shiny hunting methods. Just try to find a shiny, maybe catch it, put it on the team. Just tap that one special thing to remember the playthrough just that much more. Alright, finally. This is... Back to this, because this is not X and Y, this is Pokemon Crystal Clear. And, alright, so we've gotten to the top of the tower. We definitely, I'm definitely glad I decided to train Sparks up, because at first I thought we were only going to be fighting Weeping Bells, or Victory Bells. And, elect and just electric type moves weren't going to be doing much for me here. Alright, pretty good. Not bad. Alright. I think that was his last Pokemon. Sage Troy was defeated. Yes, your trust is real. Take my money. I'm probably gonna cut back to the Pokemon Center, so see you guys in a second. And we're back. Okay. So this should be one of the final trainers. The Elder's Relic is a treasure to behold. These guys are getting close to the level 40 range, so... My Pokemon are pretty high level. Looks like I'll actually be using, um... Uh, Golbat a lot now. So, yeah. I'm pretty happy with how this playthrough's been going. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I'm having a good time. I mean, like I said, this is technically my first time playing Pokemon Crystal, uh, just the second generation. So maybe I should have actually, you know, played one of those instead. I think that would have been unique, but I'm not sure if I mentioned this before. I did try. I was planning on doing a Pokemon Crystal thing. I... Well, that's another shiny Pokemon story where the first thing I got, I picked Cyndaquil as my starter. It was a shiny, but the game kind of just stopped working. And, I, I mean, at first, after that, I just thought maybe the game was maybe hacked or something, so I didn't really want to play it then. But then, next thing you know, I'm actually playing a ROM hack. So, 
maybe I'm just being over dramatic now. <laughs> nice. Bane attack, and Stantler should go down. Oh. Stomp. Oh. Okay then. Looks like I am. Oh, Kam Kamazots. Looks like I will be using him soon. Quick attack! Goodbye! Thank god, it would have been funny if it didn't move and it just, like, lost one health. Actually, have you guys ever had that happen to you? Like, like with my experience bar right now? Be right back! Anyways... Now that we're back here... We have one last challenge, but we're gonna take this first. Found an escape rope! Nice. Though the encounters here are really weak, I don't really care. It's a powerful painting of a bell sprout. Wow. You have done well to arrive here! Sprout Tower is a place of training. People and Pokemon test their bonds to build a bright future together. Entrusted with a sacred relic, I stand guard here. I am the last of the sages, the Elder. I am the final test. Allow me to check the ties between your Pokemon and you! Is that actually the correct grammar? Anyway, Sage Lee wants to battle. Sage Lee sent out Victory Bell. Jeez, who would have thunk? He has a Victory Bell. Cerberus still doesn't have a fire move because he gets that at level 40. Yay. Faint attack, it is. So, out of curiosity, um, if this does well, do you think, do you, would you guys want to see, like, another Pokemon playthrough? Not of, not of this game, or probably not even of another ROM hack, but would you want to see another, like, playthrough of a Pokemon game? I hope I'm not, like, too boring. Like, I don't go over bios of the Pokemon in the areas, I don't go over the rare encounters, because I personally don't know what to expect. I have never played Generation 2, as I said before, so I don't know what's on these routes. And since Kanto's technically the second area you're supposed to visit in this game, I don't know if they changed the encounters there, so... Yeah, and instead of playing through the game and understanding its inner roots and knowing how everything's gonna be, I wanted to... I wanted to play this with a blind perspective, just so that way my reaction would have been the same as you guys. That's a large amount of levels you got there, buddy. And I'm still faster. Be a miracle if it paralyzed! Let's send out Kamazots. <laughs> Cause Kamazots is actually gonna be decent here. Reflects. I'm glad that because I'm pretty sure Noctowl is a normal flying type, but it doesn't say that because Confuse Ray is a ghost type move, it doesn't affect it. Good, good. Reflect that. Gamazots use bite. Didn't do anything. Go back in there, Cerberus. <laughs> Cerberus is dark type, dark type resists. It's funny. But honestly, I like how these areas aren't just going to be the, the weaker ones that they are. Like, I'm glad that if you start in Kanto, all of Johto's not going to be just an easy walk in the park. You're going to have to try still. It's not going to be that you can just step all over the gym leaders. What I even like even better is that like you can re-challenge gym leaders. So, I think if... If, um, Game Freak ever takes, like, inspiration from fan games, they should definitely use something like this. Uh, Fortress, let's see, um... 
No, I think I'll be fine. But, yeah, this type of idea is really just, it's a good idea. Alright, let's use Faint Attack. Sir, um, Fortress, I believe, is Grass something. I don't remember. Too smog. It does not affect him. He's probably poison type. Get out of there, Cerberus! <laughs> Okay, go, Kamazots! This actually is quite a good battle. Darn it. I'll have to pick that up later. It used ex explosion. You psychopath. Luna, you're up. This is gonna be his strongest Pokemon. Another, another victory. I should have expected that, but it failed. He's on. Darn it. Well, you should be able to survive one hit. Ah, down goes Luna. We're gonna send Cerberus, and I'm gonna probably heal him. If you don't take out the master, then that's alright. Cerberus is good down. Please tell me you're gonna wake up. So wish you would wake up. You're not gonna wake up, are you? Are you seriously not gonna wake up? Are you seriously not gonna wake up? Are we gonna do this? Are you gonna do this? You're gonna do this. Okay. I'm so glad that you decided to sleep through everything, Pikachu. So glad. It knows I can't do anything to it. It knows I can't do anything to it, so it's just gonna laugh at me. Are you kidding me? Just, just get it over with. Why? Like, why did you have to do that? Did you not want my Pokemon to be awake to see it be KO'd? Solitaire! 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 What? Oh. 
It'd be nice if it if Taltar actually could wake up though. I'm gonna use a potion on him because Solitaire is actually my last shot and he's doing well. Solitaire does not want to wake up. I hate to be the one that just spams potions, but I'm just gonna probably get Solitaire back to full. I mean, it could be worse. I could be spamming like four restores. So. I'm gonna use a potion just because I really don't want Solitaire to go down. It's gonna use Sleep Powder. Why didn't it use Sleep Powder? I don't... I don't think this is gonna KO. I'm gonna be sad if it does though. I lose some happiness because of that too, buddy. I lost some happiness because of that too. We are not going to end this off until we beat this tower. So let's just charge up, suck up the defeat, and try again. Seriously, solitaire though, why? <laughs> Why did you do that much? Okay, let's just get this through. There you go. Victory bell! Cerberus! Fate attack! Damage! Sweet sands! Lower deck! Uh, evasion. <laughs> Vine whip. Not much! Critical hit. Bites. Eating plants. Hey, at least I'm gonna get a ton more experience. Let's be honest, that's actually pretty good. And I'm never going to be in that dire straight for uh, money because if push comes to shove, I could easily just re-challenge some of the gyms and just do it that way. I don't really think I'll ever need to because I think we're going to be pretty good when it comes to that. I, I seriously don't want servers to go down. I'm gonna send in Kam uh, Kamazots because I know Kamazots can take a hit. And I know for a fact that Kamazots is faster, so I believe that because of the takedown recoil and um, the fact that Kamazots is actually pretty strong, that Kamazots may be able to take it down. Darn it. And it's going. Oh, it flinched. Good. Now, wing attack. Good. It went down. Phew. Cerberus. Amazons! Nice, buddy! Nice. Fortress! We are not gonna switch because I want Camazots to take care of this. 
this stupid, self-destructing little acorn thing that's going to spam takedown and then go boom. Now, if I don't do enough damage, it's going to you self-destruct. Kamazots, please! Thank God. I was really worried that it was going to get out self-destruct. We're not going to switch out, because Kamazots should be super effective against it with wing attack. And this victory bell should go down. This is a much better run, thank God. There we go. Oh, now you have self-destruct. That'd be... Actually, that would be pretty hilarious. But it's gone. The victory bell is down. And the tower has been toppled. Ah, oh, excellent. A worthy trainer. At last. Let's just... Let's just go along with him. He, he, he seems to have forgotten that he's already beaten me. Many trainers have tried and failed before me. They lack the will to do what was necessary. <laughs> you have formed a strong bond with your Pokemon. I can see a secret fire in your eyes. And so, with my full conviction, I pass this on to you. We got the Rainbow Wing. But the Rainbow Wing in the key pocket. This is not the end of your path. Take that to the Tin Tower. The sages there will help you. Nice. But now we finally have eaten the Brass Tower. I'm not going to use the Escape Rope because why would I? The counters here are nothing. And rarely ever happen. I'm trying to make one happen just so I can laugh. And if it's a shiny too, that'd be hilarious. But it wasn't meant to be. But now this video is probably going to be extremely long. So we're going to end it here because I'd rather not make an hour-long video. I hope you all enjoyed my little fight against the Sprout Tower. I mean, I was really surprised the first time after Faulkner, and now we did it. I'll see you all next time when we go on and find the Tin Tower. See you all next time.